What is up, RC enthusiasts? Today I'm going to be comparing the FCX18 to the TRX4M. Let's get to it. Now these two guys are probably two of my most favorite 18 scales right now. That's including this Bronco right here, but this Bronco is a very modded rig. I'm just going to compare these two because this one right here is pretty stock. And that one is 100% stock right there. Now this one right here is a hard body, but less detail. This one's a hard body as well, but you have an opening hood right here. And it just looks a little bit more real. Like it looks... It's painted obviously so it gives it that more metallic look like it's a real car while this one right here just kind of still has that plasticky look to it. It's about to be a year old the TRX 4M and it's still one of my favorites. Now if you don't bash it and you treat it like a trail truck, this guy right here has been very durable for me. As you can tell there's no mods whatsoever on this. I know my uh, Bronco is modded but I didn't need it. I didn't break anything on that one. I just did all the mods just because I went brushless and I wanted to have metal everywhere else. The gearbox is still plastic in that one as well so. And other than the driveline being a little sloppy on this one because of having the two-speed gearbox, and I did test it a little bit, I was thinking it was the portal axles giving it all that slop. I ended up finding out it's not the axle, and definitely all that play is coming from the two-speed gearbox. And that switch mechanism it uses to switch from first to second gear has to have some play in it so it can actually engage into that gear. Now let's point out a little bit more technical differences between these two. They're both steel C-channel chassis. The FMS is a little thicker and a little bigger chassis, so I'm assuming it's going to be a little heavier, which is good. If you have a hard body, you want every weight to be down low. So by adding weight to the chassis that way and putting the metal links on the bottom of this one, they definitely lowered the CG of this rig to help it with that really heavy body right there. Plastic gears in the gearbox here, plastic gears in the gearbox there. You have plastic gears in the diffs here, plastic gears in the diffs there. Now this is full bushing on this guy and full ball bearing on that guy, so that's a plus for that guy. The tires. I'd say grippiness goes to this guy, both oil filled shocks, and I do like this one a little bit better. They're both smooth, but this one is adjustable with a collar and it's just, you know, unlimitedly adjustable. But this one right here, you have to use precise clips. So, you know, the adjustment is not as precise as this one where you could just micro adjust this one for sure with a little collar. But anyway, yeah, I was complaining about this not having metal gears. I know this one doesn't have it either, but I wasn't comparing it to this when I was doing that. I was more comparing it. This guy right here in the background. I'm going to make another video. It's going to be this guy against this guy because I have some things to say about this guy right here versus this guy. So we got these three guys over there at the end, the LC80 from FMS in the middle, and both sides of it are TRX4Ms. We got a Bronco to the left and a Defender to the right. The Bronco is the most modded one there. The Defender only has low range gears and is pretty much a stock TRX4M, and the FMS is a completely stock FMS right here. I didn't really make any rollover points for this. Most of the truck stock can make it through this course. It's just more flex test and testing for any driveline play and maybe, you know, front to rear weight biases. So yeah, this one, like I said, is 100% stock right here. We'll talk about the other two when we run them. But as you can tell, the low range is pretty good. Oh, you see that jump right there? That's the play I'm talking about. That little jump once in a while can throw you off your line. See that right there? A little jumpy. But if you just take it easy, you can kind of work yourself through it. Almost didn't make that. See, it's still a pretty good truck. I mean, by no means am I saying this is a bad truck. I'm just here to prove a point about a TRX for him just being just a little bit more refined, you know, and it's a really good truck other than not having portal axles two speed. But that's a, you know, regular axle truck with a single speed. It's pretty good. And yeah, some say it's a little primitive of a truck, but I think some of those primitive features it has are actually pretty cool. And they help the, you know, more beginner friendly style, especially with the TRX for him where you have to take the body up and you have to unplug the battery and plug it in just to make it run. That I think is good for newbies because they won't leave the battery plugged in by accident, which you don't want to do to any RC anyway. Now I'll run the stock TRX 4M with the low range gears. And the low range gears are pretty cheap on this, so I'm not going to consider that like an extreme mod or anything. They're only like $15, I believe. And it's pretty easy to swap into the gearbox. Oops, messed up that line, but the TRX 4M will handle it. I am trying to go as slow as possible with each of these to try to make the run as smooth as possible so you guys can tell the differences hopefully. You see when you drop into this how much less play there was right there. I actually dropped in pretty smooth. Kind of rushed that section right there but nothing special in that section. So you can tell right here 
I think the FMS looked like it had a little bit more flex right here. I'm not sure. But, you know, this TRX4M is definitely composed. Check that out. This is my TRX4M Bronco right here. This one is my most modded little 18 scale. It has a brushless system in there from Fury Tech, which is the Lizard Pro, I believe. Metal ring and pinion and the axles. And it has the low range gears installed in the gearbox. It has the stock Traxxas wheel weights up front and it's running the TRX4M Defender tires on it. So I switched the tires around from both of them. So earlier we saw that Defender running, that's actually running on the Bronco stock tires. And the other mods I have on this are pretty much just cosmetic. The aluminum bodied shocks, red diff covers, and your spare wheel and a 3D printed high lift and the lights are all just cosmetic stuff. Other than that, everything else is pretty stock on here. I don't even have ball bearings on this thing. It's all bushings. Look how slow this thing is. If I crawled this low the whole time, we'd be here waiting for like a 15 minute video just for this guy. But we're gonna speed it up, try to get it to the speeds of the other two trucks. But I just wanna show you guys how nice and tame this guy is right here. And that steering angle, man, it sets you up pretty well. Gets your lines all set up nicely. It does help a lot. Yeah. Ooh, crazy line. Very soft tires. Very long line right here. Still works. Articulation's good. Weight bias is good on these trucks. Look at that. So composed. Drive line is not jumpy. It's just plus though. Yeah. <laughs> and as for the lights. The TRX4M's Pro Light Kit is definitely awesome. I mean, you get all the lights you want. The only thing I don't like about it is you have to use the, the ESC, the button on the ESC to switch the light modes, which is kind of like old school compared to what FMS has been doing where you can actually switch everything through the transmitter, which it should be easy to do that. I, I believe Trax should have done that as well. But other than that, their light kit works better, I believe, than this light kit because this light kit comes with turn signals on all the modes pretty much unless it's off and nobody uses their turn signals on the trail. But as you can tell on mine, I've turned off the turn signals. And I'll show you guys a picture right here of what you need to unplug to do that, but I'm still trying to figure out a way to where I can unplug all those and still plug in the tail lights so I can have them on as well. And it doesn't matter if it's a brake light or just steady on. I'd rather have them steady on and maybe have the top one as a reverse or just have all of them steady on. Who knows, I might do the on and reverse thing. Well, there you guys go. As you can tell, it's nighttime over here now and uh, I'm just recording the ending to this video because I deleted it, so. Yeah guys, these two rigs right here, I can recommend both of them, they're both fun in their own way. This is definitely going to hit my hill climb pretty soon. I don't know which one I'm bringing along with it, maybe this guy right here, just to give it somebody to trail with. But yeah, there you go guys, thanks for watching as usual, and as always, stay safe out there, go have fun, and run that RC.